Welcome to Juggling Interviews. This episode is brought to you by eJuggle, the IJ's official online publication, where you can find the latest juggling news, articles, videos, and podcasts, just like this one. If you want to check that out, you can head over to their website at juggle.org slash eJuggle, with the link in the description. This episode is also sponsored by Play Juggling. On their website, you can find high-quality props like balls, clubs, rings, diablos, poise, fire equipments, flower sticks, glow props, and tons more. Head over to playjuggling.com and use my code XAV10, XAV10 to get 10% off your next purchase. It's a great way to support me, so thank you a lot, Play Juggling. Now let's get to the episode. So, hello everyone. Welcome back to Juggling Interviews. Today, I'm with Gideon. How are you doing, Gideon? Hello, I'm doing great. Enjoying my Saturday. Excited oh, yeah? to be here and to catch up with you. Uh, it's so fun. Also, me and Gideon knew each other. We met in, in real life. He's a good friend of mine in juggling community. It's so fun to talk to you finally on this podcast. It's fun, yeah. I was in Montreal just this like June or July, I think June, and uh, we hung out. We filmed some tricks. Showed me your city a little bit. Oh yeah. Even though I helped you use the metro system a little bit. Because yeah. <laughs> I'm I'm from like not the countryside, but like in. All alternate cities like Montreal is the big spot in Quebec, but I'm I'm 40 minutes away, so I, I don't know all the intricacies intricacies in like metro in Montreal. So you still help me. Okay. It was fun. No, it was fun. I mean, we ate poutine. Poutine, we yeah. At, like, restaurant. Oh yeah. We juggled. We found a nice university that had AC, and we trained there for like three, four hours. It was fun. D- did you like the poutine? Yeah, yeah, I did. Because people, I, I mean, it tastes like French fries with a bunch of stuff on it. So it yeah, good. people find it gross to like, almost look like wet, wet bread or something like it's fries just dipped, soaked in gravy. But what can I say? It's still I good. Like wet <laughs> bread. I like wet fries. It was great. I enjoyed it. It was fun. In good company. Good hot dogs too. You also told me to try the Montreal hot dogs. Yeah. So that was fun. But that's not today's subject. <laughs> Wait, what if we do a podcast about this though? Screw it. Let's I'm just down. do a 50 I, minute I podcast about <laughs> hot dogs. Bro. I'm I worked at a hot dog stand one summer in college. It was so much fun. So <laughs> I could go. I could go on about hot dogs too. I'm gonna ask the classic question, Gideon. How did you learn to juggle? How did you got introduced to juggling? I learned how to juggle. Yeah, of course. I learned to juggle when I was 11 years old. My dad um, taught me he could do a cascade. Uh, he thought it would be a fun activity for me, and he was right. Uh, we kind of like. He relearned, and we learned together using that classic klutz book of juggling with those square beanbags. Um, it was a fun father-son activity, and um, we just kept going. We were kind of like progressing together. I was watching YouTube. We were going on some of the tricks in the book. Um, so that's how I first learned. Um, and then eventually I was, so that was in sixth grade. And then by the time I was in seventh grade, I had a history teacher, Miss Spike. Shout out to her. And she actually was close friends with this guy, Robert Strong, who was a like a magician comedy magician and juggler and she was like oh Gideon you would like you should meet this guy because he's a juggler and so he taught me some of like the next level of intermediate tricks like some four ball stuff some different like four ball patterns like you know columns and like whatever different versions of the four ball fountain um and then I was really hooked and he also said, said I should go to San Francisco to the um circus center where they have a juggling club and that's where I first saw people juggling like you know five clubs in real life and everything it was just amazing um that was really fun so that's how i got hooked that was all when i was like 12 years old so i got i was lucky to have such a supportive community yeah and also like you got helped in that big step right because you learn to juggle and often the hardest step is to like learn the hard not hard but like it's very hard to do like a box trick or four balls when you just have the cascade in mind or (laughs) when you just have uh, the muscle connection to like barely cross balls so when you have to do like fours that go into your in the same hand two in one hand feels like very strange like you often do it like not not in very vertical way but like you don't do it the right way like you don't make it spin to your outside you may you make it like towards you <laughs> have you had that True, issue? yeah i mean i was i don't remember i mean probably i don't really remember i didn't used to ever like film myself back then but I think, like, I just focused on, like, you know, doing the columns versus doing, like, the inside fountain versus outside. And, you know, I was lucky enough, but I was learning to 2006, 2007. By then, there was already YouTube. So there wasn't a ton like there is now. There's still plenty of 
stuff to look off of. Um, so it wasn't like back in the day. I know you learned in like 2020 or something, which is still yeah. crazy to me because you're so good. Yeah, that's that's crazy. Like so you, recently. You, you learned juggling when I was born. <laughs> I'm born in 2006. <laughs> <laughs> that uh, is crazy. <laughs> Well, you're like 19, 19 18. That's I'm about to turn 19 crazy, right? in a couple of months in February. Now it's September 21. Uh, it's 21st. I, I might have to check your birth certificate because that's you seem older than you are. I mean, I feel like when you're doing the such a compliment, Tomojo, such a compliment. I feel like you used to be like 21 and then you got younger. I'll 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 investigate that. <laughs> sure, but yeah, like okay. So you told me someone helped you to go uh, from three ball cascade right up to four ball was he like your mentor for a while or you just looked up to him and met him a couple times i mean i think both like i met him like five or six you know actually more than that way more than that he um showed me so i could already do some three ball tricks and um and then he taught me like some different four ball tricks some other three ball tricks and you know he was a performer a uh, magician mm -hmm. who did juggling and so after like a year or so when i could you know i was like a young kid who could do five balls he started to take me to some of his shows. And so I would like uh, help him clean up his like magic stuff and his like big thumb and stuff. And then he would give me like maybe two minutes on stage where he would like talk when I would just juggle. And that was awesome. That was so nice of him. And looking back, that was like such a great thing to give me. And it was such, so cool of him. And probably like, you know, he had to drive, we would drive like an hour, two hours to Walnut Creek or some random other suburb. And looking back, like, that was really cool of him. So I'm still in touch with him. He's a really cool guy. He's still juggling Robert Strong, the comedy magician. So, yeah, that was a great... He was definitely a mentor. And when I was, like, a old, little older, like, 15, 16, he helped me get together, like, a street performing act and some other, like, more stage stuff that I don't really do anymore, but I did when I was in high school. And now, like, a couple months ago, just this summer, you were on stage again. How did you d develop your stage presence over the years? Um... I don't have much of a stage presence. I don't, I don't perform very often, maybe once or twice a year. Um, so I was definitely nervous for this IG, IJA performance. Um, I definitely feel like I'm awkward on stage. So, you know, there's only one way to get better at that, which is practice, which I don't do a ton as far as stage goes. Like I said, when I was 16 ish, I would do birthday parties, street performing and like local, like community shows. So I was maybe would do more stuff then. Um, and now it's like, Maybe I'll have, like sometimes every once in a while I'll have like a student who has a birthday party, a younger brother. I juggled some light up balls at a wedding a couple years ago and also just a couple weeks ago. Um, so it's like here and there. I'm not actively seeking out gigs like that. Um, but so yeah, definitely the IJA was the biggest like thing I've done in a while. Was as it stressful? Far as, like, performing. Um, it was a little stressful. I mean, I was nervous, but it was, you know. People are super nice. I knew that it was nice to have a juggling audience because they knew what I was up to. And I was I was prepared. I practiced a, a lot, a lot for it. So, um, yeah, I I wouldn't say stressful. Nerve-wracking for sure. I was yeah. about to get it over with. Yeah, <laughs> but it was fun. And also, a uh, fun thing, you, you showed me your act. Uh, you did, like, a preview in your act. And, like, I had the music playing on my phone. Well, I had like AirPods oh, yeah, and, like in front thing, yeah. of me doing it live. Oh, that was way too fun. Like that felt like a 3D experience, like uh, interactive <laughs> cinema thing, where you're, like you you dropped, I, but you, I was, I was... Like, right there. I was, like and then you picked back up and like yeah, <laughs> you're interacting. <laughs> yeah, well, um, you can edit the podcast and cut that out when it says I dropped. Oh, we don't want the audience to know that I would drop it. <laughs> um, no, it was. Hey nice. guys, was okay. So, you. also, you told me that you're a teacher, right? Yeah, I just <laughs> yeah, uh, no, definitely. Uh, yeah, so anyways, it was nice to, sh to show the routine to a juggler, and you gave me some good feedback, and it was nice to just like perform it live and pretend like it's the real thing. And uh, yeah, I'm happy with how it went on the actual gig. I think I, you know, I think I'm gonna drop twice, uh, which I'll, I'll take. Obviously, you want to drop with performance, but um, hey, it's like five minutes of juggling, so I'm glad I didn't drop more than that. Yeah, no, you, I mean. You had very diverse um, tricks, even though you have your same like cocoon of style, right? You have like the swappy stuff and your uh, factory looking type tricks and uh, drop cascade. But also you had like some cool head uh, balancing. You had some cool uh, body throws added with the four ball techniques. And that was very like, 
that that was like a Gideon style extrapolated. Like you, you made something out of your style and touched pretty much everything. It was very, very cool, actually. Thank you. I mean, it means a lot. You know, I just tried to do my best tricks and, you know, mostly tricks that I like didn't invent, but kind of stumbled upon myself. I know dozens of others have done them, but I just wanted to, you know, do tricks that felt unique to me. And then, and, um, and then, you know, I went through many different edits and I would feel myself be like, okay, this one doesn't look as good. I'll stick in this one. And, um, yeah, that's how it went. I mean, if you watch the video of the real thing, I'm wearing this like, uh, it's like black and do this track suit. And actually my friends and my fiance, like, about a week before I left for uh, Green Bay, they were like, the outfit you're using is, is not is not good. you got to change this. So we went shopping together, and so I'm glad I did that because that, I think, also was nice. I mean, that's like I said, I'm, I'm a juggler, not much of a performer. So stuff like the outfit and the stage presence is things that are newer to me. So um, I'm glad they helped me out with that. Yeah, also you don't have, like, that third-person perspective on your thing. You're, like, so focused in your act and, like, not not make something boring for the people that you don't notice the fine like fine details of clothing or the way you move this or the way you plan this out it's very cool actually i think that's that's the number one thing people learn in circus school too like having professionals look because they they're very very good at like uh moving on stage they they have like they have professional dancers they have uh people doing theater too they looking at your expression uh, the way you have the way you cover your stage, if you're, a, if you have a good stage presence, if you're effective and you don't really think about that unless you're a, you're aiming to perform in life. When you're just a juggler that happens to do shows here and there, you don't really notice that. You just think about your performance or what uh, cool tricks you could do or wow effects, but you don't think about the finest, finest details. Yeah. And I mean, all that stuff is another, like a completely different skill that it's, um, yeah, it's just different. Um, and I think like, it's like hard to practice that unless you're just like performing a ton, which I'm not doing. Um, yeah. I was saying I, uh, another big juggling mentor of mine was Tim Kelly, who I, I met at the juggling club in San Francisco. Um, he's an awesome three ball juggler, especially like from the original days of YouTube. It, like if you typed in three ball juggling, his video would come up first. Um, he's got some awesome tricks. And so he was like really a great teacher to me when I was like 13, 12. And I was juggling with him recently, like maybe few months ago talked about the IGA performance and I got to do it for him and he gave me some great feedback um and also I was thinking like oh, I don't know what to wear maybe I'll just go with the classic like you know suit vest thingy that's all shiny and he was like no <laughs> don't do that to us do not do that anything but that and he was just like that's not your style you're not like a suit guy you should wear an Adidas tracksuit so he also helped me out <laughs> same thing with Michael Karras by the way he gave me some great feedback more so on the tricks and the performance itself and so uh tim kelly michael karras and also my friends were super helpful with that and you you gave me some good tips too so. <laughs> yeah yeah it was very cool also y'all go check out was it on the ij channel did it post it out or you have it on your own channel um no it's on my own channel right it's yeah you so you guys should, should, yeah it's very cool also you have the the very distance view so you see the whole thing from far you see the whole stage Yeah, it, the video is great. I mean, it's really cool that they film the video for all the competitors. Yeah. Um, so yeah. it's not like someone recorded on their phone like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What have you been up to uh, lately? What do you do these days in juggling, uh, juggling wise? So, I mean, well, to be honest, the past two months or month, I should say, uh, it's been a new school year. And I went from taking a year off of teaching to going back full time in the classroom. And so the past month i haven't been juggling a lot which is sad um but before that i mean you know you can look at my instagram i was doing a lot of stuff with like you know a 2x 2x switch where you're like i have two balls in your hand you just switch like that I'm trying to do that insert that into every pattern that i can um like my ij which in a lot of factory variations three and four ball um and you know drop cascade two ball tricks so i actually have a few videos in the in the bank that i'm going to post soon um where you can see what i'm up to That's so cool, yeah. Uh, yeah, how, how do you catch up with your first occupation in life, which is teaching and also having uh, social media and juggling even for yourself, just practicing and going to festivals? Like, how do you match up with uh, managing classes and going out 
you know, also you travel a lot <laughs> to like how do you manage to uh, do teaching when you go to other countries as well well so last year i took the year off from teaching full-time um and i was just tutoring like teaching sat classes and some other language courses online just with private students via zoom and so that allowed me to travel so that's when i did most of my traveling which was awesome i went to mexico city oaxaca chile colombia and then i went over to montreal as well and so that was so awesome i got to spend pretty much all my time juggling several hours a day which was a real gift you know a real blessing when i look back at it wish i could do that now and now i'm back to full-time teaching and so the answer to answer questions i don't really manage both when i'm teaching full-time it's it's hard you know it's a full-time job plus a lot of weekend and after work work and so i could maybe juggle 30 45 minutes a day if i'm lucky no. um but the trade-off is you get a summer break you get a winter break and you get spring break and you get weeks off where you can go back to the the juggling grind that's cool yeah also i feel like Cause I, I, I'm in college now and I also have a job on the side. I do a couple a couple hours too. And I find myself not juggling some days. Like today I just juggle because I was like a family dinner. I just fly my props. But like I feel like I have the same type of uh, scheduling maybe. I have like some days where I have like whole nights free. So I do maybe two hours. But then I don't juggle for the next two days. So I, I think we have like similar uh, approach with work and juggling 40 minutes each day yeah. versus two hours for two or three days <laughs> yeah you got you got to stick it when you have time you know it's like not all of us are lucky enough or you know fortunate enough to be able to like juggle several hours a day um we got jobs and studying and stuff like that so mm. i wish i had more time to juggle sometimes i should just stick it in more because it always makes me feel better if i'm stressed about work or something just work on some new tricks filming stuff is fun too but yeah I haven't had the inspiration recently, so hopefully soon. Oh, I have the exact same thing. Like, right now I'm doing better. Like, I'm talking very recently. We're in September. I started posting, like, a couple times a week when I can because I noticed that's how you, you grow your your account way more than if you post every three weeks. Um, So I, I, I always record or, like, manage some ideas that I have on my phone and delete some and add some. And when I have, like, new variations, I... It's just always in the foreground, uh, not not in the foreground, in the background, where I could have some nicely filmed tricks. It's the same ideas, but I just film them and try to make like a cool edit, and it can be a post, and like it's very valuable for an Instagram page too. So I I'm trying to not retain myself from doing that. That also helps for, <laughs> for posting content when I don't have my inspiration. <laughs> yeah, no, I feel it. I mean, there's like different things to to focus on right because like there's one aspect of like trying to grow an instagram audience which i think you're right posting as much as possible is probably best for that um and then there's just like i mean i don't know if i'm that interested in growing i'm just want to like show off my new tricks and my skills to the juggling community and that it's just like when i have something new i'll post it um i go yeah. through periods i mean there's a time when i try to like you know when i was on my year off i would try to post every single week just to stay updated even if it wasn't a new trick or anything special Um, but now, I mean, it's just kind of when I have time, I'm like, okay, this is awesome. This needs to be posted. Yeah. Um, growing up, did you want to do uh, anything near juggling for a living? Or you always set up uh, for uh, teaching? Um, I Teaching is something that came to me later in life. When I was like 14, 15, I wanted to be a juggler. Then in high school, I got more into playing music. And um, I played the mandolin, ukulele, like some bass. And so when I entered college i studied uh something like related to music as well as german language shout out and so i was more focused on being a musician um and it wasn't until after i graduated college and was like trying to figure you know i worked at a record label for like a year it wasn't really for me that's when i realized like you know what juggling is really what i truly love i'm gonna get back to this did that for a couple of years i lost my boring day job to covid and i was like well i guess it's time to become a teacher There was something in the back of my head for a while. Um, but then once COVID happened, I actually went through with it. And it all happened pretty fast. And now this is my third year teaching. Third real year. Fourth year if you include my like COVID teacher training year. So so did you study to uh, become a teacher? You you went from record labels to then losing your job, your day, daytime job, to then going to teaching? Yeah, I mean, so... Um, I didn't study like education in undergrad, 
but after COVID, I did a one year like teacher training program to get my credential, where I also like worked in a classroom. It was like it was a Zoom classroom, which was awesome. I mean, yeah. <laughs> it wasn't awesome. It was terrible for a lot of teachers and students, yeah. but it was nice. Where you it was a nice opportunity your... for you. And yeah, it was nice to learn like that. Um, and so, yeah, I have my like teaching credential in California. Very exciting. That's so fun. Maybe there's some of your students watching this. Do they watch your content? <laughs> um, I think some of them do. I mean, I have a couple students who are really into juggling. You know who you are. Um, so, uh, I would teach like a juggling class once a week after school because like some of the kids got really really into it, and that was really fun. Because like, I had, I mean, I have a couple students who are doing five balls. One student flushed six. Whoa. Got some club <laughs> jugglers. So yeah, there's like five or six kids who are really into it, which is you know super fun and inspiring. So if any of y'all come here, come by the podcast. Hello there. <laughs> Hey. yeah i've seen i've seen some uh, stories and little posts here and there where you teach your students oh it's very fun to see like i feel if i was a teacher yeah, to every time i have no correction or <laughs> stuff on the side i'd probably uh, go out and juggle with the with, with the kids that are interested in juggling too right <laughs> yeah well it's nice to just have in the back pocket because like you know sometimes it's like okay this is a really boring lesson today like I'll start opening up with some juggling tricks, you know, just to, like, <laughs> warm up. Because it's, like, fun. It, you know, it takes two seconds, and it's, like, okay. I don't know. It's just fun. So I always have my balls with me. Uh, I'll do a little demonstration sometimes. That's so cool, yeah. And also, I have a my art teacher. Um, I started juggling um, maybe at the end of uh, – oh, I don't know the great numbers. We don't work with the same great numbers as everyone. But here, uh, maybe at, like, 11, you start high school. Wait, no, no, I'm completely off. My bad. Maybe at 12, 13, we, you, we started high school, and I started juggling, like, at my late 14s, 15s, okay? So, I had this art teacher at my early 14s, so I didn't even start juggling. She was just like that, yeah, she was cool, cool personality, showing this and this, and, like, it's very, she just started uh, teaching at the time, so it was very, like, you know, she's doing her thing, she's cool, she's not annoying, that's, that's the best, right? She's just showing the techniques that's and stuff. Great. And then yeah. I learned, I rehad her as a teacher, like right before I quit high school, my last grade of, of high school at like 17, 16, where I was well into juggling and I discovered she had like whole circus background and she does like a static pole and like, she's way, way more into circus than I thought. And then we started talking about like common inspiration and like circus school here in Montreal and stuff like, it's so cool. Cool. I wish she was, I wish she, she talked about this before, right? So I feel like if I had to make a connection with my teacher, that would be even funner to like know uh, what they're up to on their personal side, side of hobbies, right? Yeah, that's cool. I mean, it's like, I think being pers personable is a good trait of a teacher, but like there's different styles. I always like, you know, share what's on my mind and what I'm up to with my kids, but I think other teachers are more like yeah. personal life is this high. This is my teacher person. So just different strategies. But that sounds cool. Yeah. Yeah, but also, like it wasn't in class. Like, I was talking after class because I heard, I overheard from some students that were doing, uh, like, circus classes after school at my school. I, I overheard that she was doing circus. Like, oh, it's just too fun to connect oh, with the uh, teachers. Like the, they're, they're out of their teacher character. They just, like, talk about uh, what they're yeah, working on. Yeah, and it's, it's out of the program. It's way cooler. Then you connect with them even more. And next time you see them in class, you're like, <laughs> you had a whole conversation with them the the other day it, it, oh, it's way too good that's cool uh like being when i talk to random people they're always like i say like oh yeah i'm a you know middle school teacher and they pretty much everyone will be like oh i had this one teacher who's like my high school english or like my middle school math who really was just awesome and it's like cool because like you know there's you know not every teacher's for every student and not every student's for every teacher for sure yeah <laughs> but like uh you know everyone has their one that they really get through to and it's cool i mean it's like you know, a mentor, which is, which is great. So, um, there's, there's a fair distribution. Yeah, a, <laughs> yeah. So can you tell me when you start juggling? Let's say after this podcast, I know you have some stuff, but like, let, let's say you were going to juggle. How would your juggling session look like? Um, so I basically like right now I have like six tricks that I'm working on that are like newer that I want to get really clean so I can film them eventually. So I have like a rough film of those. So I'll like watch that and be like, okay, I want to work on these six things. And I don't keep, I don't like write down exactly what I'm going to do. I just kind of have it in my head. I know there's these five, six things. Um, and then I'm, uh, I'm going to, I have a couple of like juggling festivals coming up. 
like Kansas City in October and Game of Thrones in January. I'm going to perform, so I'm just like, you know, still just doing my routine to make sure that's, you know, as good as it can be for when that time comes. So just running through those two things. I don't have a ton of time to work on like numbers or five ball side solves or things like that right now, which I don't really post ever, but I really enjoy doing. Um, so when I have more extended periods, like when I go to Jug and Club out here in Pasadena, I'll work on that more. But when it's just like 45 minutes to myself, I stick to the six, three ball tricks and my routine. That's cool. So I feel that like if, you, if yeah. you're working on the, the yeah. same couple of tricks, you have like very, you have them very assimilated and you have more chance to like push variations of what you're already doing. Because if you said right before you did like two X crossing arm, if you practice tricks that uh, involves that kind of uh, two X's, it's way easier after because you have the muscle connections, even though you didn't practice for hours and hours because you had a downtime and you're juggling practice, right? Even though you didn't pr uh, pr practice this for hours and hours, next time, let's say, uh, what's the next one? Winter break? Bam, you have like a couple months to practice. Now you're back with this first, solid baby. two X, right? Don't Which forget one? Thanksgiving. But yeah. Thanksgiving? Sorry, oh, Thanksgiving. I, I don't think we I'm have... like, who's we have, counting? <clears throat> we have one day, I think, in Canada. It's not the biggest event <laughs> in Canada. <laughs> I mean, from where I'm at. I, to I totally get what you're saying. Yeah. Oh, yeah, but we don't have like a school holiday for Thanksgiving. We just have like one day, I think. <laughs> I got have, a full week. We have winter break. Yeah, I already have plans. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that works differently. I didn't know there was a full week. I thought it was like a, a long weekend, like a couple of days. Depends on the school. Depends yeah. on the school. But um, you know, it's like teaching is a lot of work, but we get time off. And I know not all jobs get time off like that, so I gotta be thankful to get a week off here, a couple weeks off in the winter. So yeah, but I, I totally get what you're saying. Sense to stay up to date when and then you have those times off where you can really uh, grind and practice like a wider breadth of, of tricks. But also, like you're not losing what you currently have at the moment, which is very good. I think it, 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 hopefully not. Yeah. <laughs> hopefully not. <laughs> yeah, you have like your signature tricks and style that you still want to keep up with. Because if you just remove that, what's your juggling style anymore, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay well, i will say also like filming yourself is such a good um like practice because i forget a lot of tricks that i'm working on and then i'll film myself in a session and then even three weeks later i'll look back and be like oh wait i, I totally forgot about this um so i recommend to all jugglers to just film as much as possible not even even if you don't produce any videos or post anything just to have for yourself to not forget because there's just so many hundreds if not thousands of like tricks and permutations of little things so It's a great tool to memorize, to remember things, and also to uh, see how things look. I should. I actually wonder how many tricks someone learns in a juggling journey. Like, let's say someone someone starts tomorrow and end up in 10 years, but they journal everything they learn. I wonder if they, because I feel like I have my 100 tricks series on my Instagram stories, and I feel like that's like one percent of what I do. Like sometimes I find something cool, but like I feel like I learned way more. Okay, also, there's, like, the whole oh, yeah. the whole part of, like, the, the basic tricks, like, box, then you have high-low box, then you have uh, end box, high-low end box, so that takes up hundreds right away, but, like, specific tricks, damn, I wonder how much we know, right, because it's very good to journal, and, like, I also have uh, people in audio won't, <laughs> cannot see it, but, like, people that watch on YouTube right now, I have a whole, like, trick ideas, too. Oh, not, nice. Not only, yeah. You want to you wanna hear one? I was trying to look, yeah. <laughs> I have drop down box with four balls. The way I, the one I posted before we did the collab. And then I added like maybe doing, oh, tight one. Oh, yeah, I maybe doing side swap like 5-3 and that drop, drop down box. Stuff like that. Yeah. Even the tricks you don't know how to do. It's still good to have something you can keep up with. Because your ideas just comes and <laughs> it just disappears. <laughs> Yeah, well, something that Tim Kelly said to me uh, when I was, like, 13 was just, like, I have forgotten more three-ball tricks than you will ever learn in your life. And he was, he was kind of kidding, but it's, like, kind of a, it's, like, a, the trope is true. I mean, it's, like, some old trope, but it's, like, it's true. You forget a lot of stuff. Um, and so I like to say that to young students, too. So. <laughs> What do you feel about, uh, you had a whole music background? You, you studied music, and you got really interested into playing instruments. And what kind of music do you uh, listen to while juggling? Um, so I actually, it's super weird, but I like, I listen, if I'm like grinding on my own for a while, I'll listen to like a podcast 
Oh. Which is kind of sad. I don't listen to a lot of music anymore. I listen to like all podcasts, so all kinds of different things, uh, politics, history, <laughs> sports. So it's like pretty boring. Uh, sometimes I'll get into an album. I like hip hop. I, I like jazz. I like rock, indie. I, I would listen to a lot of different types of music, but um, for whatever reason, I like putting on a nice podcast. I juggle. Okay, that's fun. Sometimes your podcast. Yeah, sometimes. <laughs> Sometimes it's cool. I've heard all of them. I think <laughs> maybe <laughs> they're cool. There's also some on my own channel. Like, yeah, right before the I've episode. Seen, oh, I know. Right before I know. the episode. I've seen Mike Moore. Yeah. I've seen Baton. Yeah. Right before the episode, you you said like, oh, uh, damn, that's like you're experimenting. Like, what what are you at? Maybe your thirtieth podcast. I, I I didn't notice, but I I probably have done like. A couple dozen at this point, like maybe twenty or something. I don't even notice. <laughs> I did many, but they're they're so fun to do. So like keep track. Yeah. So you can be proud of yourself. I mean, it's a lot of work. It's uh, you know, be like, hey, pretty soon I'll be at a hundred podcasts. Yeah, yeah, true. But I'm keeping track on this series, like the juggling interviews with the IJ. I've the numbers, it. but on my own channel, I had like a couple, maybe like seven or eight, just like with the Which people's. One is this one for the IJ. This number like one uh, fifteen. What? <laughs> this one fifteen? You want me to post this in like five years? <laughs> no, I was wondering what numbers this is like for the IJA podcast. Like, um, I'll check this up right now. Um, if I remember, Maximilian right before was number eight. So. Oh my god. You're maybe. So this is nine. Maybe. Maybe. Oh wait, no. Maximilian was six, then I had Tom. Bennett, Tom Diablo, number seven, and now right. we're eight. Now we're eight. Nice. Yeah. Episode eight. Cool. Ooh. How do you feel being in the episode eight? Feels great. It's nothing like episode seven. We're in eight right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was I was picking it picking that up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the vibe is just different. And then who knows what, what comes in episode nine? Stay I like updated. your background, your podcast background. I see your bed in the background. That's cool. And then the um, piano. Do you have, I also like the wave. And you have that beautiful painting, the wave of oh, what, Konagawa. What's it called? Konagawa from the yeah, Edo period. Think, yeah, yeah. Very famous painting. Yes. I even have a shirt of that wave. I'll be back. <laughs> okay. Found it. Woo. Oh yeah, there it is. Hell yeah. Beautiful. <laughs> it really uh, symbolizes the whole Edo period, if, if you ask me. <laughs> I just find it aesthetically cool. <laughs> it is cool. Oh yeah. Tell me, what do you want to talk about? Juggling. I don't know. Uh, you know, actually... Uh, I'll answer any questions. <laughs> what do you think about... Uh, Juggling nowadays, like it's pretty different than last year. Do you feel like so? Maybe no. <laughs> um, it's it, <laughs> it's hard to say. I mean, I don't know. It's like the community is fun. My first IJA was last year and last summer, twenty twenty three, um, and that was so much fun to hang out with all the jugglers. But it's awesome. It's an awesome community and something that's like I really recommend to all jugglers. Even if you're just watching this, even if you like aren't trying to like you know become a content creator, is post yourself on Instagram and YouTube because. It was such a great way when I was traveling to meet new people. I went to Mexico City. I just made a like a story like, hey, and who are the jugglers in Mexico City? And Edwin from RX Two Balls hit me up. I got to hang out with him and also um, Dante Danger, aka Dante Peligro, aka Space Pig himself. Uh, and so there's a really great uh, juggling community in Mexico City. So that was fun to hang out with all of them, plus a lot more people. And then I went down to. Um, Let's see. Uh, Isidora from Chile introduced me to a really cool group oh. of jugglers in um, Valparaiso, Chile, which is awesome. Um, and so we went, me and my fiance went from just like being just two random tourists in a city to like really having a community there. Yeah. Um, and so we did a lot of fun things. There's so many jugglers from Chile. So that was awesome. Same thing in Colombia. I got to hang out with um, Sebastian, Sebastian um, from, um, from Harleco Falls. And that was cool too. Same thing when I went to uh, Montreal. I was like, "Oh, I'm gonna hit up Xavier or do you, is it Zav or Sav or Shav?" Actually, um, 
exam sounds good, but then the the real question is when, especially here, English speaking people from here, they don't know if they pronounce Xavier or Xavier, like Xavier. Xavier. Yeah. It's so weird. I think Xavier is like commonly known, just overall, worldwide. Yeah. If someone if someone's called Xavier to pronounce it your and not like ye, <laughs> like in French, but yeah. Right. Damn, you're so lucky. I, I I wish I could travel that much. I'm looking. We talked about this, but I'm looking to go maybe to next EJC. Never went to Europe alone, um, at all. Even uh, the only place I went it was Cuba for non juggling reason. Cool. <laughs> I just went for a vacation with my That's parents. Cool. Uh, yeah, look, that's that was, awesome. That was like almost a decade back. <laughs> that was a while ago. Wow. Yeah, but it cool. was so much fun, and I got so much sunburn. So now I know if I go to a hot country, you put your sunscreen on, you'll regret it. <laughs> totally agree. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm lucky to do this. My fiance works from home. I was t teaching from home too, so we we're lucky that we we're able to work and travel. Um, it was an awesome year, but the whole point of that was just saying it to people to like post yourself juggling on Instagram or just like connect to people. All jugglers I've met have been nice, um, and it's just a great way to meet people in a new city. So um, that's it. that's how I feel about the state of the jug community. But it all, it's always been supportive. I mean, I started when I was just 12, which is different. But in San Francisco, all these people were so nice to like have me like a 12 year old hang out with them while they like juggled and talked about things. So that was cool too. So I. I've found jugglers to be inclusive on uh, nice. I'm sure there's other experiences out there, but I've had a good experience with that. So I'm yeah. a big fan of the jugglers community. The connections you make are so good. Like even, even you think that the most like business aspect or like, because you want to do circus in life or you want to like develop this and this or like do content creation, either way, just speaking with as many people and discovering many jugglers, everything if you just want to make friends or juggle for fun if you want to have like a mentor or have someone teach you or like if you want to progress with someone have like a rival or everything, everything just works in social media i feel that nowadays you have a juggling rival? uh no I, i'm just the You're best unrivaled. no i'm just the best yeah <laughs> you're pretty good i have to say you you won the weekly tomato challenge that was pretty impressive to watch back when you were 22 i don't even think that was a, a competition or anything I'm the only one that no, but you did tried to do. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. All right. I'm trying. I don't think I feel like I have a joking rival, but that's. I like that idea. It's funny to have enemies in such a supportive community. No, is that rival is not yeah. an enemy. Uh, when I first started, true. Uh, when I first started, uh, Casper Westland, uh, who's maybe oh, listening he's so to this. Oh, good. He's not. He got sucked into the world of Kendama, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, I wish he would get back to juggle. He's awesome. I mean, he did a post uh, very recently. I mean, very recently, like a month ago, two months ago. But still, it's recent compared to the years he haven't posted. But yeah, uh, when I first started juggling in 2020, I had like a couple months of experience, and I had the stupid idea of starting a game of juggle with Casper. <clears throat> I told him to like go all out. Like, I don't care. I just wanted to learn as much as possible. So I took like a couple letters and a couple days a couple weeks it was pretty hard and then i discovered a little bit more timoto because he was more on the he was very on the timoto side but like he had a lot of body throws and like foot stalls and pfft. yeah penguins special penguins is whoa. i mean yeah. his inverted sprung cascade might be with like the cleanest one i in my opinion that i've seen it's just so like perfect um yeah it's yeah. beautiful oh have you interviewed him for this huh i don't think so right Have you interviewed him for this podcast? I don't think so, right? No, right, no. Should I? Woo. Should I bring him? I, yeah. I think I should. Uh, I'm gonna ask him about Kendama too. I feel like that would be an. I already Man, talked. You can to... skip that. <laughs> no, no. The, how he switched to Kendama? What? What? What juggling felt like before switching? Like, maybe he's bored. Anyways, that's just a parenthesis. Um, yeah. Uh, so yeah, I did a game of juggle with him, and that was very. Uh, that was very beneficial uh, beneficial because uh for the first year you just I, i wasn't just on the easier side because the game of juggle lasted a whole year at some point because i was catching up to him and we were wow. always back and forth maybe That's i think cool. it lasted maybe like even almost like 15 months some, even more than a year i think i should look back but the first year of juggling i went from like three balls to like box to 
then he started to give me the like some very hard tricks and then some things that traumatized me a little bit like say <laughs> and that really helped me because I, I wasn't just laying around and having fun i had to grind because i remember like after school i had to go back home and learn casper strict before like the weekend or because I, I didn't want to take a letter because rival i, I got to keep my ego up <laughs> So that's I, I cool. Think, I mean, I can't believe how how good you are at juggling for only being at it for four or five years. I mean, that's uh, just crazy. Honestly, like, just keep going. I can't imagine what you're gonna be like in 2032, or you know, whenever. So, so that's tight. Uh, I, I always forget how how new you are. Uh, <laughs> that's so nice of you. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Uh, overall, the point was talk to everyone. You'll you have every single juggler ready to to uh, share with you. They're Everyone just wanted to share everyone. So good. That's what we like. Also, uh, talking about challenges too. Uh, you did the swap challenge. 2X challenge. The oh, yeah. That was challenge. Congrats was... on second place. Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Don't say that ever again. I tried to be first for like oh, so many days. But it doesn't work. Okay. Because, uh, yeah, the, the, challenge was was, challenge. the challenge was really fun. I took it like... Eh, 50% seriously at first when I saw the story <laughs> I tried it I did like 10 or 11 and I remember texting you like oh I don't think that's possible like maybe 12 is gonna be my big big max 13 like that would be <sighs> I was very uh pessimistic a little bit I think I, I thought it was I don't know I thought the limits was closer than I thought uh well i believe you told me that the physical limit is probably 15 so <laughs> yeah. i think that we might got 15 and then i think um, okay my physical limit was definitely around 15 because the amount of attempts i did until i saw like uh, uh um um what's his name chris hodge until i saw chris hodge do yeah. 16 and... yeah 16 yeah, yeah in his yeah, old yeah. video so he didn't enter my challenge but he had an old video that was like the everyone reference which is cool I mean, he was, I mean, he said in some comments that he was, like, practicing a lot for that. And just the throwing one super high. He was practicing that a lot to break the side swap barrier. I believe Mike got 15, which I think is a Z. I mean, someone yeah. should double check that in the comments. I think that's oh, wait, a Z. But and then he, there's the Japanese the guy, side guy side, right? Shun. You know Shun? Shun Z, yeah. really awesome. Yeah. He got 15 after. He didn't enter my challenge either, but he just, like, did a casual 15 afterwards, too, which was very really cool. I think his and shower like, looks even so harder. Bad. Like, I feel like the shower version... I mean, he used to shower, so a shower is like his cascade at this point. <laughs> but, like, uh, Sean... Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he looked way too smooth. Also, he didn't do, like, m m me or Mike's version of 2Xs, where he went, like, uh, straight and he crossing. He did a whole shower, yeah. He did, like, very, very small swaps. Uh, same as Chris Hodge, too. Yeah. I mean, he's... um. That challenge is something that I've been doing for a long time. I always think it's fun, just at random juggling festivals convention to ask people how many they can get and my record is like i think 12 and uh i always wanted to see like okay like how many could you know everyone get especially if there's an incentive to it so um luckily i have friends who have juggling ball companies like uh, sebastian harleco harleco balls and edwin from rx2 and they were down to like you know help help me out with that and give some balls away and then and then i had it on instagram and then some uh anonymous juggler was like hey I love this. I want to see the the physical limit. So here's, I think it was like, I forget, maybe 150 or 200 dollars. Yeah, like here's this money. You should give it to the winner if somebody could break the 15 mark. And so that was a cool incentive too. So uh, yeah, I that was to do painful because like I don't have any other ideas. I remember I saw the I saw the 150 added. Then the grind was really up. Like <laughs> my entire yeah. practice sessions was up to that. And the attempt I got for 14 was like a couple hours uh, before Mike Moore. I didn't post it. But it was a couple of hours before Mike Moore, and I was about to like go yeah, out to do 15 because I felt really close to 15. And then Mike pa, took it on the spot, and my soul just left my I, body seeing Mike doing it. I know, I know. <laughs> but at least it was another Canadian. That's that yeah. must make you feel I mean, better, right? I mean, who else could beat it? Like Mike, Mike was the one. Like I'm not even mad about it. If it was some randoms, oof, that would have felt very bittersweet. But like, yeah, it's Mike. It's Mike. <laughs> it's Mike. <laughs> Mike, uh, uh, <laughs> next challenge if there's something Moto related, yeah. yeah. Mm. I can't think of any. That's the last challenge. I mean, who knows? Right. Some people oh. commented like, "Oh, the next challenge, please." But I, I, if I think yeah, of we, one, I'll do one. Okay. But, yeah. I, you know, what? I, I never do that on podcasts, but like, let's brainstorm. We could actually do one together, maybe. You know. 
<laughs> I feel like I'd be so up to do that. I always wanted to do a giveaway, but I never knew what way to do it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I'll keep thinking. Yeah, that'd be good, right? Because we have similar styles, so maybe something like box related or uh, swaps mm. or speed. Cause I, I think just swaps like... are nice. I mean, you know, I love two ball juggling, so maybe we could think of some two ball juggling challenge. Right. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> we'll think about that. We'll talk later. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, damn. And, and uh, well, your... thanks so much for having me on. <clears throat> yeah. I, I gotta get going kind of soon. I'm sorry to cut this short. <laughs> it's um, okay. But sorry, what were we about to ask? <laughs> what can we expect from Gideon in the future? Um, just juggling patterns on my Instagram. Whatever comes to me, I'll post. I love coming up with new patterns, so I'll yeah. we'll be doing that. I don't think I'll be competing at any IJA anytime soon. It was a lot of fun, a great experience. I'm glad I did it, but it's a lot of work. And so, yeah, I think I'll just be chilling. So you're, to you're still going to be out on socials, on your Instagram, maybe posting on YouTube here and there. So I'll have all your links yeah. down in the description. Also, if you want to point down, there's your Instagram oh, yeah, handle under your picture. Yeah. Gideon Juggles. Yeah, go follow Gideon Juggles on Instagram, on YouTube. Uh, Everywhere, go follow him in TikTok. the streets. TikTok too. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, TikTok. Yeah, I discovered you on TikTok too. Like, yeah, I think so. Yeah, TikTok's fun. Go okay. follow yeah. Gideon on every social. Uh, keep up the good work, Gideon. I think you're you're thank one of you. the jugglers that really inspires me. It's so fun to talk with oh, you. Oh, thank you. Likewise, it was a pleasure that you invited me here. This is my first podcast ever. I always didn't ruin your podcast. But <laughs> I'm excited to see you. Maybe I'll try to get to EG, EJC, maybe IJA. Yeah. Who knows? I hope you stay in the future. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And we'll keep up. We'll, we'll text. Always. Yeah. Sounds great. Thanks for having me. Thank you all for watching. Have fun juggling. See ya. Bye-bye. <laughs>